First off, I want to make it clear that this video is sponsored by Pulseway, which is rather good timing. It's as if we planned this, because I could use some remote management right about now. This is my NAS, or at least it's one of them, uh, one that I built a number of years ago now, but it's one that has finally, well, kicked the bucket, and I need to do something about that. For some context, this system actually served multiple purposes. Initially, I had it just running FreeNAS, now TrueNAS, but I quickly converted it to run ESXi, a level one or bare metal hypervisor, so that I could run both FreeNAS in a virtual machine uh, with the uh, two four terabyte IronWolf hard drives alongside the uh, an Ubuntu uh, instance, essentially our Ubuntu VM as a server. So what went wrong? Well, just a few days after getting my UPS battery backup running, I had multiple sudden power outages. Most devices were fine, but the relatively cheap SSD that I was, uh, I was using here started to throw some uh, errors, enough to make the system not want to boot unless you manually force it to. Strangely, the uh, solid state drives tend to not actually give you much, if any, warning before they fail. They just tend to stop, whereas spinning media like hard drives tend to start giving you warnings or at least enough signs long enough ahead so that you can recover any data. Now, happily the drive did throw the smart errors, so nothing serious uh, was actually lost. You know, the drive is still technically functioning, it's just not very happy about being the boot drive. I should also mention that none of the data on the two uh, hard drives I passed through to the FreeNAS VM are at risk at all, so that's good. But to be safe, I cloned this SSD and then used the cloned drive as the boot drive for the system for, for the time being to, to recover the data. From there, I copied all of the data to one of my other NAS units, and importantly for me, I recovered the .vmdk virtual disk for the Ubuntu VM, as that's where we run some of the staging and testing for locally links. That ended up being a bit of a pain, but I have the, the VMDK out, so let's get it set up on my Unraid Overkill NAS, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. First off, I'll need to get the VM running. I've copied over the .vmdk file, so in theory I just need to assign a couple of cores. I have 48 threads in total, so I think I can spare, let's say, four for this one. Alongside four gigabytes of RAM, I'll upgrade that later once I add some more RAM to the machine, and I'll have to assign the vmdk image directly as a, the primary disk in their XML view, as the, the GUI doesn't let you select VMDK files, at least as of yet. And then that's it. If I log into the VNC viewer, you can see that it's live and running fine. So now we can get Pulseway installed, uh, which you just wget the .deb package and use dpkg or dpackage to install it. You can then run the registration command and ping through the setup. Everything is nice and simple, all of the defaults are, well, all make sense, so it's quick and easy. I also happen to run a Windows VM here uh, on the same machine that I use as a rendering server, so installing Pulseway on that would be excellent as well. The installation process is actually even easier on Windows. Just download the installer, spam next, and then you'll be greeted with the configurator where you can log in and set up the frankly insane number of options. Everything from service and program monitoring to remote desktop control, scheduled tasks. It's worth noting that you can also install their client on macOS too, if you fancy, although I can't say that I have much need for that, at least personally. Let me fire up their web client and give you a look. From here, you can manage all of your systems, like switching them on and off, running updates, which especially because you can do that remotely, like while you're away, is actually a really nice feature, or use their automation tools. You can write your own scripts or use their built-in options, and if you upgrade to uh, using the link in the description below, which gives you a full 20% off, by the way, you can make use of their remote desktop tools as well. There's also their mobile apps. If you have an iOS device, you can even use your voice commands to control your systems, which is 
uh, pretty neat. Or on Android, you get the same sort of controls you get on their web UI, where you can control and update your systems from literally anywhere, which is really nice. This is especially useful as you can get push notifications alerting you if something has gone wrong. For me, that would be if my Docker containers uh, sort of crash or, or fail, or if Adobe Media Encoder isn't running on my rendering server. You can set that up in the clients. On Windows, you just head to the notifications tab and then processes, uh, but there's also countless options for everything from the server being powered off to the hard drive being full or memory utilization being too high. You can try Pulseway for free with the link in the description. And if you wanna get or uh, make use of their full suite of features, you can get 20% off using that link too. As for me, I'm going to go back to making sure that my data is backed up and secure and actually moving my QNMS to be hooked up via my UPS. I'm really happy to have Pulseway running on my VMs so that I can monitor them remotely and uh, make sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen again where, you know, the uh, I've had it where media encoder isn't running in the background and therefore I have to manually go and log stuff. I've actually had, uh, I've lost footage because I thought that media encoder had rendered the footage already and then I formatted the SD card. So that was great. So hopefully these sorts of added features will mean that that won't happen again and I don't have to wait for another power outage to find out that my drive is failing. With that said, I want to thank Pulseway again for sponsoring this video and to you guys for watching. Like I said, if you want to check them out, there's a link in the description down below. If you want to see more videos from me, then you can check those out on the end cards. And if you want to see or be notified of new videos from me as well, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video.